Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, January 10th, 2023 business meeting of the Olympia City Council. For the record, we have a quorum this evening uh, with uh, six of us present and Mayor Pro Tem Gilman is uh, tuning in remotely. Hello, Mayor Pro Tem, up there on the big screen. Uh, we uh, need to get a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So, so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? All right, we have a, an approved agenda. We have three items on special recognition this evening, and three just really, special recognition doesn't really kind of cover it, because these are all really pretty, especially wonderful that we're gonna be uh, recognizing tonight. So the first one is item 2A, and that is our annual reading, uh, a poetry reading from our poet laureate, and to uh, talk about the work of the Poet Laureate Program, we have our arts program and planning supervisor, uh, Stephanie Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Selby and members of council. Happy New Year. Uh, I am here today with Poet Laureate, Olympia Poet Laureate, Ashley McBunch, uh, who you've met last year uh, and again this year. Um, part of the job of the Olympia Poet Laureate is to present a poem at the January City Council meeting of each year. Uh, and since their appointment as Poet uh, Laureate in April 2021, Ashley has worked to fulfill the goals of the Poet Laureate program, which are to promote poetry as an art form, expand access to the literary arts, connect the community to poetry, and to promote poetry as a community voice that contrib contributes to a sense of place. Um, and in addition, um, the Poet Laureate, uh, when Ashley was appointed, uh, was tasked with the, um, the, the topic of utilizing the power of poetry and language to contribute insight, foster understanding, and support healing around issues of equity in, and inclusion in our community. Uh, and since Ashley met with you last, they have had a large scope of work, which you can read about and the public can read about in the staff report that we've attached today. But I did want to let folks know that in 2023, a new Poet Laureate will be selected and given the task of utilizing the power of poetry and language to contribute to a thoughtful response and centering around our environment and climate change in our community. Um, Ashley will be involved in solicitation, selection, and onboarding of the 2023 to 2025 Olympia Poet Laureate, and applications will open in late February. Uh, and with that, um, here's Ashley McPunch. a little bit taller than Stephanie. Okay. <laughs> um, good evening, Major Shelby and um, council members. Tonight I'm sharing the poem for the city council. It is called, We Are the Existence of Hope. Our infinite beings operate within dimensions of parallel occurrences that embrace illusions time on a finite schedule, ticking at every heartbeat. We are continuous lines of intersecting crystallized vibrations of memories formed from generations who have crossed those rolling hills. We are one with many voices, dripping rainstorms of opinions on our journey to the horizon we all witness in some way. Under the same moon, we attempt to harmonize our methods to communicate, our interpretation of peace, love, and community. Although our understanding is sometimes lost, never to return, or found within the eyes of others, we can see outlines of hope that within each action, we learn enough to listen with our hearts. Thank you. No, thank you. That was lovely. And it just sets a wonderful tone and an intention for a new year. And I just can't thank you enough, Ashley. I want to also say that the artwork behind Ashley was done by Ashley as well. So. Oh, wow. Multi, multi level of talent there. Uh, I'm going to open it up to the dais to see if there's anyone else who would like to make comments. I've got council member partially. Ashley, is there anything you don't do? <laughs> I want to yeah, I imagine it as an artist, that's probably what happens. It, it gets in your head and you have to get it out. I just want to thank you because every time you've read one of your poems or you made us create our own, not only did you touch me, but you've made me think and learn. So thank you. Looks like we have our mayor pro tem. Did you have a comment there? Oh, no. Okay. It's always hard when it's remote, you know, to figure out whether somebody wants 
to say something. So uh, I'm going to go to uh, Councilmember Payne. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hello, Ashley. Um, I just wanted to express my gratitude to you over this last year for your work. And each time you come back to us, uh, you always just leave me thinking with your words. Um, and I, I also want to thank you. Um, you know, it's only fitting that you kick us off with a new year with a poem like this, uh, especially as we wrapped our reimagining public safety uh, process, which I know you also wrote a poem for that process as well. And so I just want to say thank you uh, for everything you've done. And anyone else? Oh, Council Member Wynn. Just gratitude to you, Ashley. Um, I've appreciated all of the art breaks uh, that you've provided us in many different settings, um, uh, Council, and also the reimagining public safety work and out in the community, and I'm sure in places that I have no idea about. Um, you have uh, uh, provided us with, um, uh, I think that what I feel from your poetry anyways, is just a moment of just humanity and, um, and a creative space to just uh, reflect on uh, how we could be doing things and what our intentions are going forward. I very, very much appreciate your service and your sharing your talents with us during this time. Um, and just thank you for everything. All right, and I think we have a, also a question regarding whether we can get a copy of the poem. Has it been? Excellent. All right. Uh, and we will move forward uh, under the guise of the existence of hope. So thank you so much. All right. We're going to go on to item now 2B, and that is uh, recognizing uh, the Dr. Luther Martin Luther King Jr. Day that's coming up this Monday. This is an annual recognition, and this evening we are so pleased to be joined by um, uh, two reverends in our in our community that will be receiving uh, copies of the proclamation. At this time, we are going to read, uh, do a joint reading. Oh, wonderful! Uh, we're going to be a, do, be doing a joint reading of the proclamation. And I believe we start off with Councilmember Madrone. Whereas the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. dedicated his life to the nonviolent crusade for human rights for all people and advanced the values of equality, justice, and opportunity for all, and... Whereas Dr. King's words and vision resonate today as they did in his lifetime, and it is incumbent upon us all to carry forward his principles of peace, equality, and service, and... Whereas, as the forces of hate and oppression rise up in the world, Dr. King reminds us that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And? Whereas, in his struggle for human rights, Dr. King was committed to economic justice as well as social justice. And in his 1964 Nobel Peace Prize address, Dr. King called out poverty as an evil which plagues the modern world and... Whereas Dr. King encouraged us to act with compassion, saying, as you press on for justice, be sure to move with dignity and discipline using only the weapon of love and... Whereas the federal government recognized Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a national holiday in law on November 2nd, 1983 and... Now therefore, be it resolved that the Olympia City Council hereby proclaims Monday, January 16th, 2023 as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day in Olympia and urges the community to pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. King through participation in acts of service to the community on this day and throughout the year. Signed in the city of Olympia, Washington, this 10th day of January, 2023, Olympia City Council, Cheryl Selby Mayor. So at this time, it would... I'd like to call forward Reverend Reeves, who is joining us from the uh, New Life Baptist Church. And my understanding is, Reverend Reeves, you're fairly new in that position. So for a lot of us, this is our first time meeting you. So welcome. Hello to everyone. I'd like to greet you, of course, in the name of peace and in the name of Christ. It's good to see each and every one of you, and uh, certainly to this mayor and to the council. I do bring you greetings from the New Life Baptist Church 
over off Pacific Avenue there in Lacey. And uh, I am very much so new to the Thurston County community, but certainly not new to the state of North Carolina, excuse me, the state of Washington, as I, of course, relocated from North Carolina, uh, but had served at Joint Base lewis McCord when it was formerly Fort Lewis uh, as a member of the United States Army uh, some almost 20 years ago. Uh, and so I'm excited about being back in the Pacific Northwest and excited about an opportunity to be able to connect and partner and uh, even the more excited about what King Day means to so many. And so I'm hopeful that as we continue to celebrate this day that we don't just think of it as a day of celebration, uh, but that we move beyond this day of celebration and be intentional about, of course, the acts that we exude based upon the principles that King set forth for each and every one of us. And so thank you so very much uh, for being proactive and being intentional as it relates to how we celebrate King Day. And uh, certainly New Life will have a celebration on January the 16th, of course, Monday, uh, 2023 at 12 noon. Our speaker for the day will be Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, and we're excited about that particular day. And so each of you are invited, and of course those who are in the room are invited to be with us that day. And I just wanted to take this, this opportunity to say thank you. And next we have Reverend Charlotte Petty from Risen Faith Fellowship to make some remarks as well. And I think there might be some other people in the audience that might want to say some things that I can open it up for as well. Good evening. I am so pleased to be here this evening. And that's because I agree with everything that's been said, so I don't have to repeat it, okay? <laughs> I, I, I've been pastoring here in Olympia for almost 30 years, and I appreciate the connection that we have had with the community. And, and the one thing that I, my staff used to say to me, they said, Charlotte, being a Christian, for you, it's not just going to church, clapping your hands. It's a daily life. And it means that we have to know that all of us really came from the same man and wife. You may be light, brown, green, yellow, or orange, but we're all sisters and brothers. And I am so glad that we in the city of Olympia have tried to show that love and peace that we need in order to be successful. And I want to thank you, and I am one of those people who remember Dr. Martin Luther King in person. Mm -hmm. And I usually, I'm over 50, I'm over 60, <laughs> over 70, and over 80. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just thank God because he's real. And uh, I thought about the, you, you all have to forgive a preacher, but I forgot about, I remembered about the eagle, how the eagle renews its youth, and how the eagle is the greatest bird, and how it has to come down, get in that water, when it, and, and get rid of all of its feathers and everything, and then has to learn how to walk and get it all together again. And you know what? That's the way we sometimes need to kind of rejuvenate and realize why we are here and help each other grow. And I want to thank the community. I want to thank uh, the city of Olympia, all of you, for the work that you are doing. And I want you to continue because you too realize that Don, Dr. Martin Luther King told us something that actually God intended for us to do, and that was to have the love and the peace among each other. So I want to thank you, and I thank each person who's here tonight, and all of us have a responsibility of helping somebody else learn how to grow, and we have to show the love and appreciation for each other. So thank you for being here. God bless.
I like the words of get it all together again. And that kind of is what we do at the beginning of the year. We, we think about renewal and, and setting new intentions. And so this evening is really just shaping up to be just that. So uh, is there anyone else that has gotten here that might want to come up and make a few statements? I know the Jackson family is here. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I also want to honor that you're here. Thank you, Mass Shelby, for the recognition. I had no intention of saying anything this evening. My pastor, Reverend Reese, has spoken. But I would just add the comments that's been made already to say thank you very much to the city of Olympia for always taking out the time this time of year to acknowledge Dr. Martin Luther King. We've come here several years for this occasion, and you don't have to do that with your busy schedules. But we do appreciate the acknowledgement and the recognition. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Oh, we got another Jackson. Yes, Matt Jackson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I feel extremely honored and blessed in so very many ways. I stand up here as somebody who marched the only living person in Washington, the last living person who marched and organized, marched with and organized for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So he's a tangible person to me. The image in my head is what I remember from last uh, spending time with him. And so I'm so pleased that you're doing this, not for my benefit, but the, the benefit of all. And that's really fantastic. It's so humble to see and honored to see the council doing this. It's a very emotional moment for me. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we're going to move on to item 2C tonight, which is recognizing National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. And you can look around the room if you're here in chambers, and you can see that we have a great representation from the Olympia Police Department tonight. And we're just so honored that you're taking time out from your busy days to be here. We do have a, a shared reading that we're going to start off with, and then we, I know we've got, um, I know our chief is going to talk to us, and I'm sure there'll be other other people. So uh, we are going to start off, and I think, let me see, my notes. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Councilmember Cooper. Thank you, Mayor Selby. Whereas January 9th is recognized as National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day to express gratitude and support for the men and women who serve their communities in law enforcement agencies and Whereas the 110 men and women serving in the Olympia Police Department include 76 commissioned officers, 13 corrections officers, and 21 civilians, and whereas the mission of the Olympia Police Department is to consistently earn the trust of Olympia's residents and visitors, and Whereas in 2021, OPD staff responded to more than 49,000 calls for services attended 147 community events, and engaged with nearly 12,000 community members, and? Whereas OPD has worked to develop a diversity of services, including the crisis response unit and the familiar faces peer navigators to better ensure community members can get the most appropriate response to their needs, and? Whereas Olympia Police Department has long embraced the guardian mindset of policing, emphasizing creating and strengthening relationships in the community and has been an early adopter of the tenets of police reform and. Whereas in 2021, the Olympia Police Department created a department work group to evaluate and modify more than 20 OPD policies to ensure they comply with newly adopted state police reform legislation as well as meet our community's expectations and. Whereas OPD committed its support to Olympia's community-led process to reimagine public safety and the recommendations that emerge from it, and now therefore be it resolved that the Olympia City Council hereby recognizes January 9th, 
2023 is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day in the City of Olympia and offers their heartfelt thanks and deepest gratitude for the dedication and service of the men and women of the Olympia Police Department signed in the City of Olympia, Washington this 10th day of January, 2023, Cheryl Selby, Mayor. Now it's my honor to uh, welcome our police chief, Rich Allen, to the podium to make some remarks. Thank you for the record, Rich Allen, uh, police chief, and thank you for taking the time to acknowledge our department and recognize all the good work. Um, all of us in the department believe that policing is, a, uh, is an honor and a privilege, and uh, we try every day to live up to the standards that the public has for us. Um, one of the best parts about being chief is that I get to see the good work that we do every day. And it's nice to know that others see that as well. So thank you. So I'll accept the proclamation uh, on behalf of the department, but it certainly isn't for me. Uh, it's for all of them that are in the back of the room. It's for everyone behind the scenes that are kind of pulling the levers to make sure our department runs every day. And it's for the officers on the street keeping our community safe. So thank you again. I also want to acknowledge a special guest in our chambers, our newly elected sheriff, Derek Sanders. Uh, so do you want to just stand up and just let people take a look at you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other? I like to embarrass people. Right? Uh, uh, anyone? Uh, Councilmember Madrone. Um, I want to thank you all for being here and um, uh, Chief Allen, for your words and the leadership that you've brought to your uh, to the department, um, I just I want to acknowledge that I think the relationship between the council and the police department has really grown significantly over the past couple of years, and I really value that. I value the work that you do for your for the community and uh, Sheriff Sanders. I, I hope we have you in here sometime soon to to formally introduce yourself to um, to uh, the Olympia community here, uh, and we can uh, you know have you in here to say a few words sometime soon. Uh, Councilmember Parshley. In 2020, I got a front row seat uh, being the chair of the Public Safety Ad Hoc Committee. What I got out of that was an appreciation for my police department here. I am overwhelmed by the willingness of your department to take a hard look at yourself and to weather the last two and a half years. You have repeatedly stepped up and asked how can we do this better and serve our community better. That is a hard task. No human being can do that repeatedly over two years and come out a better department. That is character. That is ethics. I am very, very proud of you. And when I get the chance of saying that to community members, I do say it. You have taken self-reflection and been a partner in public safety reimagination. So thank you very much. All right, I've got Councilmember Huen, followed by Councilmember Cooper. Everything my colleague said and more. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, letting the community, letting council members and myself in every time. Um, we've, you know, been a little bit curious as to what you do. Um, I think it's fair to say many, many people are, and um, and I couldn't imagine that's an easy thing. Um, but every time I've wanted a ride along or a walkabout or you know wanted to see what National Night Out was all about, mm -hmm. um, or just had questions and I really wasn't sure what the point of having a school resource officer was. You know, these are. Uh, <laughs> questions that I had that um, you'd provided um, a welcoming space to answer those questions, and I do really appreciate it. Um, and I just want to say, as a just a sidebar, Kim, I see you. I'm such a fan of yours. And I did go out and buy an electric toothbrush after I went on that ride along with you. <laughs> There's, there's a story. I think we got, we got. I think she's turning pretty red. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. 
Um, <laughs> Council Member Cooper. <laughs> we do have to proclaim Martin Luther King's day because it's important that we remind ourselves of his words and his values as we do this work every day. This is the reason that all of us are sitting here, is to have Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy and his values be the core of what our city does. And so I appreciate you being here and being so willing to work with the city side by side for so many years. Thank you. And I know that our law enforcement officers carry that too. They've had a rough couple of years and the fact that they're standing here in this council chambers with us today means so much to me. And I just wanna thank you all for the jobs that you do, putting your lives on the line for us every single day and the sacrifice that your families make while you're doing it. We appreciate you and we see you and we value all of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Cooper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Cooper. <laughs> Councilmember Payne. First of all, I just want to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, over this past year, I have just witnessed uh, so much from the department that uh, really, I mean, frankly, the community just doesn't know about. Um, I, I have witnessed you save people's lives, uh, and that's not something that gets picked up by the press, right? Um, you just go out there and you do incredible work. You put yourselves at risk. I thank you, I thank your families. I know that the relationship uh, with the previous council or former councils has been strained between the department. Uh, I'd like to think that that is changing. Um, I know that uh, sometimes the community uh, has some mistrust about what that means, right? When the council and the department seem to be, uh, you know, sort of reconciling and, and bridging that gap. But that is very important for what we all do in this community. Uh, and we are supposed to uh, have each other's backs uh, and look out for our neighbors. Uh, and that includes the people in uniform who live here. It includes those who uh, don't live here but work here. Um, and so I just appreciate um, all, of, all of what you do, um, leaving your families behind to come and serve our community and put yourself at risk while you do it. So thank you for all you do. And Mayor Pro Tem Gilman. Thank you, Mayor Selby. Um, first, I just want to be on the record saying I'm equally proud of these two resolutions to both proclaim Martin Luther King Day and to recognize National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. That, um, as, as my councilmates have just said, um, there are times where we would have seen these two resolutions as being at odds. And I, I really am grateful that we're on a journey where I believe we see them as creating synergistic opportunities. And I'm inspired by Ashley McBunch's poem that together we are the existence of hope. And as she concluded her poem, we need, a, we need to learn enough to listen with our hearts. And I, I think that guides our that guides our work. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. All right, and I need to say some things as well. This is whew, this will be my last police appreciation um, proclamation that I'll be reading, uh, and my last Martin Luther King Jr. Day proclamation. And I loved how Mayor Pro Tem just knitted those two together and how a few years ago those would never have been scheduled on the same night. And now we can do that and be really comfortable and actually celebrate together. Uh, I also just want to acknowledge that this police agency is being recognized by the governor by coming to City Hall on Friday to learn more about the the familiar faces and the crisis response unit programs that we've propped up. And those are things that we funded back, I believe in 2018, well before that was on the top of everyone's mind and, and on the tip of their, their uh, lips about what to do for police reform. We've always been a leader. And so I just wanna acknowledge that the governor is recognizing that as well. Um, and then just on a personal note, I have had a front row seat 
I guess we would call a front front yard seat <laughs> um, to the work that you do to keep our community safe. There are many nights that you showed up and put yourselves between me and or put yourselves between my family and harm. And I will never forget that, and neither will my family. So on behalf of them and me, thank you so much. Um, with that, I think we will go on to the, like, the less exciting part of our program, <laughs> which is adopting. Our, you know, we have a public comment, but we didn't have anybody sign up. Is that correct? Either remotely or in person. OK, wonderful. So we're going to go on to adopting a consent calendar. And if you guys want to get back to the rest of your evening, you can do that right now. Just take a little, like, a, how about a five-minute break? And, and then we'll, we'll reconvene in, at uh, 735. Cool.
I think I'm going to have my council come back up to the dais. We're having way too much fun. This was great. All right, so we are going to resume our business meeting for those folks that might have been just tuning in um, on television. We just took a, a short break to uh, do a meet and greet with some of our officers and some of our members from the African American community. And it was delightful. So we are going to move right into uh, adopting a consent calendar. So I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any questions, comments, or polls tonight? It's pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's wordsmith. Yeah, let's, let's, let's find something there. Um, all right. Uh, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We have a consent calendar that takes us to a, our other business, and we're being joined again by uh, Stephanie Johnson, who is in charge of our arts programming at the city, and she's going to be talking about the next steps in our art crossing program, which is something that now people can actually see what we what we do with uh, some of our entryways and gateways into the community. And this is the next step in our newest one. And so take it away, Stephanie. Super, thank you again, uh, Mayor Selby and members of council. Again, Stephanie Johnson, Parks, Arts and Recreation Department. Um, some background information on May 22nd, 2022, City Council approved the Arts Commission's recommendation of Jennifer Corio and Dave Fry as project artists for the Martin Wayne Pacific Avenue Art Crossing Project. This project is the third of eight planned projects, public art projects uh, within one mile of uh, downtown Olympia. Art Crossing number one, entitled Guardians, Fighter, and Watcher by Lynn McJunkin and Milo White are on West Bay Drive. They're the uh, metal salmon and heron um, that are lit at night with solar power, which is the model for all of our projects. Uh, Art Crossing number two on Eastside Street is entitled Unity, Tree People, and People of the Water by Andrea Wilbur Saigo. Uh, and they're based on Coast Salish house post designs, one on each side of the uh, bridge over I-5 by um, Public Works Maintenance and Karen Frazier uh, Woodland Trail uh, head, head parking lot space. Uh, since May, Jennifer and Dave have taken a deep dive into Olympia's east side communities, and I am pleased to invite them up to show you their concept plan for Art Crossing number three. Thank you, Stephanie. And good evening, Mayor Selby and members of the council. Um, I'm quite honored to be here tonight. I must say it's a little hard to follow a poet and two preachers, but <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, but what a meaningful night to be here. So um, my husband, Dave Fry, is sitting here, but I'm going to be doing all the talking. I'm Jennifer Corio. Um, I, just for a little bit of context in our art partnership, I do the conceptual development and the design. And then Dave, he, um, he engineers my designs and fabricates them and he does all the technical things. So mm -hmm. it's a great partnership. Um, so I think that you guys have gotten background on this project. Um, and you know that uh, community engagement was a big requirement of, of this project. And it's one of the reasons that really attracted us to this project. I mean, I, we go through calls for artists all the time and I was really drawn to like somebody who really wants us to talk to the neighborhood because sometimes they say they want it and they don't offer the opportunity. And this is my shout out to um, Stephanie and her team with the Arts Commission for just um, laying the groundwork. Uh, before we even came up here for a site visit, we read through surveys. I got a lot of information about these neighborhoods and what was important to these people. And um, I take this part of the job very seriously. It's, it's talking to people and listening, trying to pull out from them what's important to them in an artwork, because it really is a privilege as an artist to try to tell somebody else's story through a work of art. So 
Um, this is a list of um, just some of the public engagement that we did. Came up for our site visit. We got a history overview, which was fascinating. And uh, we did it via Zoom, but we met with members of the community. I think there was um, at least one representative from all the different neighborhoods there. And we visited two of the faith communities, one of which was Rhythm Faith, Rhythm, Risen Faith. And I got to meet Pastor Petty and go to um, one of her, I think, very lively services. And it was very welcoming. And they gave a lot of great input into that as well. Um, and then I just kind of spent some time exploring the neighborhoods on its own. So out of that exercise, some threads started coming through. Um, one was just the historical richness of the area. It was fun to learn about the evolution of the roadway, um, the Martin Way and Pacific Avenue corridor. And what's interesting is it was all about connecting the outskirts of, of Olympia to downtown Olympia and the heart of Olympia. Um, but yet in it trying to connect down there, it sort of bifurcated these neighborhoods and caused a little bit of a disconnection. Um, I learned about the working class. You know, there were a lot of orchards and farmers, real self-sufficiency there, a lot of different faith communities and, and diversity even early on. Then I talked to the neighbors and read about what was important to them and um, lots of things came up. Uh, they talked about they love their trees, they love the fruit trees, and the walkability of the neighborhoods, and a lot about just their neighbors. They love their neighbors. They not love talking with their neighbors at the different gathering places. So there's just a lot to love about this part of Olympia, and you can tell that the residents just adore where they live and love it. Um, So then what I sort of, uh, what sifted out for me was connection, connection, connection. So there was all that background, but really it came down to what's truly important is the connection with the neighborhoods, um, the connection and the co collaboration between the neighborhoods, and then again, this reconnecting, this bridging of the south side neighborhoods with the north side neighborhoods and thinking about ways to maybe make that easier and then the welcoming of diversity. So as an artist, before I even sat down to the sketch pad, I knew I wanted two things for this artwork to do. I wanted it to highlight the richness and all these wonderful assets of the neighborhoods, because these cars are passing through, and they have no idea that you know one block either way, it's just rich, it's diverse, there's, um, there's just a lot of amazing things that they're missing as they're just passing through this busy corridor. Um, but I also wanted the artwork to express a sense of connection through the sharing of all these assets. And we came up with our concept, which is called Crossroads of Connections, Roots and Fruits, and you'll You'll see why that makes sense. I do want to give a little caveat. <laughs> As an artist, you know, I'm working on my screen trying to get just the right colors and knowing that the color that you see on your screen looks vastly different. And so when I look through this, the colors look really um, overexposed. <laughs> so, uh, well, we'll just talk about that. But the first part, the first part it would be the fruits part. And this is honing in on that aspect of how do you bring out the essence of the neighborhood or some of those wonderful things that people like. And I decided to use the tree, and not only a tree, but a fruit tree. It brings the historical reference of the orchards. And um, by using the apple tree, you can get this diversity of color. But, you know, Fruit trees are all about abundance. You know, these are the fruits of our neighborhood. So it was great symbolically as a way to pick through all the list of things people love but represent it through um, a fruit tree. Um, this is the larger of the two pieces. This will go on the west side triangle. And it's eight to nine feet in height, third diameter. Um, it, it, does look more like a screen, but it, I'm showing you in the round because it does have dimensionality to it. 
It's got a canopy. That canopy is a uh, got the leaves cut out so it's see through, so you can it's still visible. Um, you know, it's not blocking any visibility. I really like how the apples will um, they create a lot of texture on the piece. So then the second piece is the roots piece. So this is what brings the human element. Um, to, you know, I feel like you can't talk about the neighborhood without talking about the human element. So I wasn't able to show the roots of the tree on the, uh, on the other piece, but you bring the roots here that show the rootedness of the community. So these hands are, are reaching out. The roots themselves are connected or they're intertwined. The hands themselves are also linked. And then you have this pedestal that's holding a plate of the apples. Um, and so they're sort of highlighting these wonderful fruits and sharing these fruits. We played a little bit with dimension here by pulling out the hands. So you can see it's got more dimension. Um, and the colors, well, you'll see, again, this to me, <laughs> it, it really on my screen looks much deeper. And color is very important to me. So. Um, we're going to be working a lot on making sure these colors just pop. And we'll talk about materials here in a minute as well. I show the two together here in order so you to, for you to see the scale um, between the two. Um, the one on the west side is smaller. It's a smaller area. And um, I think it's always helpful to help people visualize the piece. So here it is where we superimposed it onto the picture. So this is the west side triangle. And you see a bird's eye view that where you can see its orientation on the triangle. Here's trying to represent the other piece. I think it will pop much more than you're seeing right here. There you see its orientation. And here you can kind of get an idea of seeing them in relationship. This is at the, this is traveling east and how you would see them. So then we get to the specs and materials. So the ring is, well, I guess we could talk a little bit more about, so back up, let's see. I didn't really talk about the ring. I love how the ring, I mean, What's not to love about a circle, first of all? A circle represents so many things. Some, somebody looked at this and said tree of life. I believe it was the um, Buddhist temple. They really resonated with that. They love the fruit idea um, because you go to um, their temple and there are fruits and flowers everywhere. It's, it's just a visual cornucopia to go there. Um, but what was I going to say? So the ring. Um, to me, it, it represents the whole, so we're trying to bring these neighborhoods back together, stitch them back together, so you have that. Um, but it's also a nod to the car, the car culture and the history of this corridor. Um, somebody actually said this looked a little bit like a wagon wheel to them, and I'm like, well, it's sort of, you know, there was a little bit of a play on <laughs> the wheel. Um, but you can see the similarities between the two people because they're supposed to be paired markers. So the, uh, the ring and the trunk, those are weathering steel. So weathering steel is, um, so it starts to rust and then it um, kind of self-seals so that it slows down the rusting process. It won't stop it completely, but we're talking material that will last decade upon decade upon decade. Um, and it, it's a beautiful brown, reddish color, very earthy. And then I love the juxtaposition of the earthy rust look with the, it will be auto paint. So it will have a very, um, oh, just brilliant. These things really will pop. And um, you have similarities in the colors used in both of them as well. What else can I say? So whatever is not 
weathering steel is stainless steel, which itself is robust. It is um, rust resistant, um, but it's got automotive paint on top of it, which is yet another protective layer for it. The fruit will either be hollow stainless steel balls or solid hardwood balls. Those will be painted. For lighting, we're, rec we're recommending simple up lighting and landscaping. Um, we really want the full circles to show, so it's already a grassy area, so they'll be on top of uh, concrete pads. So we just ask that there's something that covers the concrete pad, whether it's small stones or bark chips, so it looks more natural. Um, we had to provide a maintenance thing, and we'll probably give more details for this, but they, it really is um, pretty easy to keep, treat, uh, keep clean. Mild detergents, just um, once a year going in and cleaning it. Um, yeah. I don't need to go through all that. But. So that's it. Thank you very much. Did you hear the, oh, my. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, I think, yeah, lots of comments. So we'll just start, uh, Council Member Huen. Yeah. Hi, thank Hi. you so much. Okay. Clearly you care about what you do. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a couple of uh, questions for you, if that's okay. Um, can you tell me about the colors? Is it just the, you just like the composition of colors? Was there something behind those ones specifically? Well, I mean, mostly the, oh, it's not up there anymore. So greens for the tree and kind of the uh, rich vibrance of the green. And then the apples, I'm really trying to make them look like apples. So it will be trying to get the red apple, the green apple, the yellow apple. Um, and then really it, it, in terms of the hands, um, I wanted to, well, first of all, I'm trying to represent diversity also through color. And um, I didn't want to use necessarily skin tones and be that literal on the hands, but I really wanted to also just play off of the other piece. So I've got the apples that are sitting on that plate and then um, just took some still bright, but yet have a little muted or earthy tone to them on the arms. Yeah. Yeah, I th there's a lot of uh, thought and, and uh, woven all throughout both of the pieces. I think, uh, looking forward to seeing it come to the final concept. Um, I, well, being realized, I should say. <laughs> um, and just a quickie, this has occurred to me. Um, are there also at least nine pieces of fruit in the bowl as there are hands? Yes, yes that's a very good question, and it has been asked before. So there is more than more than enough apples. And what you're seeing there is, you know, there was somebody thought one time we showed them and they looked very symmetrical, and so I didn't put one on top. But there will be maybe even more. I mean, than is showing, but it. I want to make sure that nobody has that question. They just look at it and they say, oh, there is more than enough fruit to go around, plus some, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you. Great thank work. You. Thanks. That's great. Uh, Council Member Parshley? As I, um, I said to Ashley McBunch, I love it when art touches you, kind of in a visceral way. I was one of the oohs and ahs up here. <laughs> Um, and I think you distracted me so much with what the finished product was. I've forgotten the name. Can you tell us that? It's well, I tried to do it in the same vein as the uh, gate, uh, gateway number one and two. They sort of have an overarching title, and that's Crossroads, Crossroads of Connection, sort of playing on the bow tie, this crossroads, and the reconnecting of them. And then Roots and Fruits. I so. Love it. And thank you for putting so much work into this. It's going to, it feels like Olympia. So thank you. I've got uh, Councilmember Payne. Yes, thank you so much. This is, uh, it's beautiful. Um, I have a question though about has anybody ever asked you if your circle is actually an O for Olympia? <laughs> <laughs> um, because. 
that's <laughs> what I see when I look at it is it's it speaks to exactly what our values are and who we are. Right. I, I mean, when you just look at it, it's just fantastic. Um, there's so much symbolism in, in the work, uh, and I can't wait to see it. So. I love that. I love hearing other people's interpretations, which I always think if that's what they interpret, then it's right for them, and and I'll use it too, probably. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I have a question for maybe council and certainly staff. Uh, we all know that those two areas of town during campaign season end up just getting polluted with yard signs. I and I will that. lose my mayor's mind if people start putting yard signs around that. Beautiful artwork. Yes. So those areas will become an art installation. And we don't allow for those campaign signs to be an art installation. So we will take care of, make sure we pay attention to that. Thank you. Thank you. And guilty, yes, I have put my signs there before. but. <laughs> But I would, but I would know not to. Hopefully, everybody else will know not to. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, thank you so so much. Thank and you. you know, each one of these, I think, oh, we can't do anything more spectacular. But this is really, really, you 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 captured it beautifully. Thank so, you. Thank you, and it's thank an you honor. for supporting her with the fabrication. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, at this point, we do need a motion. You go, Councilmember Parsley. They move to approve the Martin Way and Pacific Avenue Art Crossings public concept plan as presented, and the artist will work on final details and present them to the Arts Commission on February 9th. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, and now we are to our council report time, and I'll just uh, talk a little bit about, uh, again, some housekeeping. We had our council retreat this last weekend, and we uh, ag agreed on which uh, committee assignments and chairmanships and interjurisdictionals and all those kinds of uh, assignments that we choose uh, for ourselves to represent uh, ourselves to represent the city. And so those will be coming forward next Tuesday for approval, as well as our annual calendar will be on consent next week as well. So we also have one more week, I believe, if you want to apply for the new uh, advisory committee on the cultural access program, Inspire Olympia, I believe one more week. Cool. Friday, this, oh sorry, this Friday, uh, they, we close and we have nine people we're gonna seat and so there's lots of opportunity there. So if you haven't thought about applying uh, yet, please do. And that's all I have. So Councilmember Cooper. Thank you, Mayor Selby. I just wanted to point out something that is pretty cool about our, our comments and so don't take this the wrong way, but we have no chairmen. Mm. All of our chairs are people who identify as women and I think that is amazing. Chair I people. Know, I don't know that I've seen it before, and so I just wanted to say that out loud, that it's a really cool thing. That's interesting. That looks like a, something that the, somebody that's into history will go, probably go back and see what that is all about. But yeah, thanks for noting that. All right, anything else you want to share for the good of the order? All right, Council Member Wen, anything? Happy New Year. Great, thank you, <laughs> Council Member Parshley. Only one thing to report, which might have to do with one of the meeting dates, uh, February 14th, I've been asked to fly to Santa Rosa for LOT to receive a national award on behalf of LOT during those two days. All right, so we moved the February, the Tuesday, February 14th meeting to Monday, February 13th. There you go. I will be in Santa Rosa. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Okay, I didn't know which day you had to leave, but yes, <laughs> all right. All right, Councilmember Payne. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Huen. I'm sorry, for the record, are we moving the February 14th meeting to the 13th? Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes, we approved that today at, at agenda setting. I think that's best for the people. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody eat out that night, eat local on the 14th. All right, Councilmember Payne. Uh, I have nothing to report. I can't right. follow that. Nope. <laughs> Council member Madron. Nothing to report. All right, city manager Jay Bernie. Oh, 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 Mayor Pro Tem Gilman. I will just offer my gratitude to council and the executive staff. 
for working hard and and being really honest at the retreat. It was a great weekend. Mm -hmm. And another shout out to Susan Grisham, who made it all look like magically perfect. So, <laughs> city manager, Jay Bernie. I have nothing to report. All right, with no further business before the Olympia City Council, we're adjourned. <laughs>